Okay. All right. So let's start today's session. Here we go. Um, so we will be having a look at a new listening material. Um, let's start. Before we do that, right. So today's, uh, we will be focusing on um, listening part B today. So when it comes to listening part B, as you guys already know, you will be listening to six different audios and you will be uh, uh, answering six different questions. So six audios, six questions. And remember, your preparation time for listening part B is 15 seconds. So they will, uh, they will read the context of who is talking to whom about what. Then they will give you 15 seconds to read your question and read your options. Okay. All right. So uh, when you read during the 15 seconds time limit, you will, uh, the preparation time, you only have one thing to do. Read your question, understand it, read your options and understand them. That's it. But make sure to keep the context in mind. Okay. So uh, um, after they read the context sentence, which gives you uh, who, which gives you a knowledge about who is talking to whom about what, then they will give you the preparation time of 15 seconds. During this time, read your question, read your options well. And remember, uh, if your question is an incomplete one, if it does not end in a question mark, make sure to read each option with the question. Okay, so uh, uh, that way you, uh, there will be clarity. Okay, you will be able to understand the meaning of your questions well. But if your question is incomplete, and when you read your options with e, uh, read your question with each options. Okay, uh, each option. So let's go. Let's uh, start with today's session. Here we go. All right. And one more thing that I wanted to uh, highlight on is that don't be in a rush to write down your answer. Uh, note down uh, if you get your answer very quickly. Keep that in mind and wait for the entire audio to end before you choose your answer because at the end they might change the answer in certain times uh, that has been a trick in OET questions uh, especially in part B where at the end by, uh, by the time the audio ends even though at first you will feel like you know option C is the answer but by the time the audio ends you will realize that it's not C rather it's A or it's B so make sure that you wait for wait for the audio to end before you mark your answers and you definitely get five seconds uh, in between to mark your answers. Okay, before you move on to the next question, you get five seconds gap to mark your answers. Mark your answers during that time. Okay, so let's dive into today's material. Um, so Surya, can you unmute yourself and read the context sentence for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you hear a senior practice nurse briefing her team in a local health center about a new app. So who is talking to whom about what? Uh, senior practitioners take uh, talking to her team and what are they talking about uh, something about a new app uh, and they're talk yeah something. they're talking about a new app so a practice nurse is talking to her team about a new app so surya can you read the question for me please yes ma'am uh, what she is stressing about the app what is she stressing about the app so what do we need to find out here What is she stressing about stressing. the app? Stressing means? Something. When you stress so something, you are? Emphasizing. Emphasizing. Yes, correct. Okay. So we need to figure out what is she emphasizing about the app? Emphasized yeah. aspect about this. She's trying to highlight something about the app. What is that about the app? Okay, so what exactly is she highlighting about the app? What exactly is she emphasizing about the app? Okay, all right. So can you read the options now? Yeah, option A, certain patients should be made aware of it. It refers to what here, Surya, and others? What does it refers to here? About it app, the new app. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, it refers to the app. Okay, it refers to it refers to uh, the app. So, uh, is she saying, uh, according to her, or is she stressing that certain patients should be made aware of the app? Is that the aspect that is being highlighted or emphasized by the nurse? That you know, some patients should be made aware of it. Okay, next one. Uh, option B, patient may need some help in understanding it. Okay, so is she saying that patients may need some help in understanding the app? Last option. Uh, it's uh, intended for healthcare workers rather than the patient, rather than patients. So this app is for healthcare workers instead of the patients. Is that what she's stressing on? Is that what she's emphasizing? 
Okay, so we need to figure out when the nurse uh, talks to her team about the new app. Uh, is that is the nurse talking saying that you know certain uh, a certain patients uh, should be made aware of the app, or is she saying does she say that you know uh, some patients may need some help understanding it, or is she uh, is she uh, trying to say that the app is for healthcare workers rather than for patients? All of you go through the question. Come, on, go through the question. Go through the options. Okay, I'm going to sh uh, share the audio. Get ready, all of you. We need to figure out the answers. So here we go. I've, okay, first, please check whether the audio is audible. Then I'll play the exact part of the audio. So please check, all of you. Four. Test six, listening. In this part of the test... Was that audible? Okay, good, good, good. So I'm taking our part of the audio. Get ready to figure out the answers. Here we go. All right, uh, in two seconds, your audio will play. So make sure to figure out the answer. Something I'd like to highlight today is a new app that's been launched that could be really useful if you're managing anyone with bladder or bowel incontinence. The app sets out to offer patients self-care tips and links to local support services. There's a wealth of information on there, however, and it can be a really useful source of information and updates for us too. The idea is that patients access services sooner rather than later, and we all have a part to play in that. As nurses on the front line, you may pick up that patients have an issue with continence that perhaps they haven't shared with their doctor or relatives, maybe due to pride or the stigma attached to such conditions. Mentioning the app to them could mean they get the help they need before the condition becomes chronic or leads to complications. Okay, what do you guys think is the answer? Is it A, B, C, which one? Maybe C, ma'am. Uh, is it C? Okay. Mm -hmm. B? Okay. It's not B, it's mm -hmm. not C. Answer is actually A. Okay. Let's understand why that is. Okay. All right. So she says that the app can be helpful to health healthcare workers too. She's, she never says uh, she never says that you know uh, it will be uh, it is for healthcare workers instead of the patients that's not said okay but let's listen let's not imagine let's listen here we go I need your full attention let me just take the exact part of the audio right something I'd like to highlight today is a new app that's been launched that could be really useful if you're managing anyone with bladder or bowel incontinence. So she's like, you know what, today I'm, I'm, I'm trying to um, stress or, you know, to uh, uh, emphasize about a new app that is for, there to help people who have urinary or um, bladder incontinence or, you know, bowel incontinence. Okay, that's what she says. The app sets out to offer patients self-care tips and links to local support services. So the app will send patients uh, different tips to help them or, you know, uh, send, send, them, uh, send the patients a link, uh, links to local support services. There's a wealth of information on there, however, and it can be a really useful source of information and updates for us too. So see, uh, that she's like, you know what, so this, this particular app will send tips to the patient and will link the patient, uh, give, send links to the patient about the local support, uh, support centers. Uh, on the other hand, it has a wealth of information that could be useful for us too, useful for us as well. So she's not saying that, you know, healthcare, it is intended for healthcare workers rather than patients. She's like, it is helpful for the patients as well as us. So that's why C is not the answer. She's saying equally helpful for both, not saying that uh, it is uh, helpful for one party more than the other. No. Okay. So that's why C is not the answer. Okay. Joe's, Manju, Saina, Asma, Smita, others got it? Okay. All right. Now, now let's listen. Now let's listen. The idea is that patients access services sooner rather than later. So the idea is to give the patients uh, uh, the required services as soon as possible rather than causing any delay. That is the uh, purpose of this app. And we all have a part to play in that. And you, we all have a role to uh, uh, play in that, like, you know, pro providing the care as soon as possible without any delay. We have a role to play in that. Okay. So, so far she has not told patients may need some time understanding it. No. As nurses on the front line, you may pick up that patients have an issue with continence that perhaps they haven't shared with their doctor. Or 
So as nurses or who are in the front lines, or as nurses who are dealing with the patients first, you must realize, you may realize that your patients are have incontinence issues that they that they have not talked to anybody else, not to not to even not even to their doctors or relatives maybe due to pride or the stigma attached to such conditions they may be they might not be sharing it with their doctors or relatives because of the shame or shame or stigma attached to it or you know because of their pride okay all right mentioning the app to them could mean they get the help they need before the condition becomes chronic mentioning the app to them so if you mention the app to them if you tell them that there is something like this to help them Okay, listen to that sentence again. She's not saying that, you know, un help them understand the app. She's saying that mention the app to them. Tell them that there is something like this. To such conditions. Mentioning the app to them could mean they get the help they need before the condition becomes chronic. So before the condition becomes chronic, they can get help if you mention the app to them. She's not saying help them understand the app. She's saying mention the app. When you mention something to someone for the first time, what are you doing? You're making them aware of it. So that's why A is the answer. Okay, so she's not saying the patients will need help understanding the app. No. When, when you need help understanding something, you already know about it. Okay, you don't know how to, uh, you know, uh, uh, work with that or you don't know how to deal with it. So that's when you uh, tell them, see, this is an, uh, uh, see, uh, this is how you work, uh, use the app. She's not asking them to help them understand how to use the app. Rather, she's telling that mention, mention the app to them. Because they have this condition that they are not ready to disclose to anyone else. And you as a frontline worker, you realize that the patient has this problem. So mention the app to them. See, there is something like this. So that's why when you, you, you tell them that there is something like this to help them. So that's why A is the answer. Okay. They, she's not saying that you need to help your patient understand the app. No, she's saying that mention the app to them, make them aware that there is something so they can get the help before their condition become a condition becomes chronic. Or leads to complications. Or uh, the condition before it uh, leads to complications, they can get help. So that's why A is the answer. When you mention something to someone, you're actually making them aware of its existence. Okay, so uh, Surya, Joe, Manu, Smita, Saina, Manchu, Nitya, Asma, others, are you clear why A is the best option, not B, not C? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma awesome. yes, ma perfect. Yes, ma perfect. Yes, ma Let's move on to the next question. Smita, can you unmute yourself and read the next scenario for me, please? Yes, ma'am. You hear a hospital nurse talking to the wife of a patient. So who is talking to whom, uh, Smita? Hospital nurse talking to the patient or uh, wife of a patient. So patient's wife. Okay, now can you read the question for me, please? What worries her about his proposed discharge? What worries her about his proposed discharge? So what do we need to find out? It's a planned discharge. Okay. So, uh, so what do we need to find out? Yes, I agree that it's a planned discharge, but what do we need to find out? Wife have some worries. Okay, maybe yeah, her, her worries. Yes, what is her concern. Uh, yes, what is the concern or what is the worry? Her worries, uh, her worry about his discharge all right, all right. Uh, her, her worry about his discharge right uh, okay all right her worry about his so something is worrying her about his discharge we need to figure out what exactly that is okay all right now can you read the options one by one option a dealing with his level of fatigue is she worried about dealing with his level of fatigue Leaving, uh, dealing with his, you know, a level of tiredness. He's very tired, maybe. So that's why is she worried about uh, taking care of that? Next one, Smita. Option B. How motivated he will be to keep active? Or is she worried about his motivation? His, uh, uh, whether he will be motivated enough to keep himself active? So is that what she's worried about? Last option. Option C. The amount of physical support he will need. Or is, it, is she worried about the amount of physical support her, her I mean, uh, the patient will need? So, um, is is the uh, is she worried about uh, taking care of the patient's fatigue level of fatigue, or is she worried about his motivation to keep keep himself active, or is she worried about the amount of physical support he will need after discharge? Okay, so all of you take a second, go through the options, go through the question. I'm going to play the audio in a second. Go through it. Come on.
Right, here you go. I'm going to play the audio. Please figure out the answer. Here we go. You wanted to speak to me. Is everything OK? Ah, uh, yes, everything's fine. Your husband's recovering well after the surgery. He should be ready for discharge in a couple of days. I just wanted to check with you if you have any concerns about that. Gosh, that soon? Well, I suppose that's good news. I can see that you've got him up and moving already, mm. and I'm sure that's the best thing, or well, he does too, so no problems on that score. Even if he does get very tired, he'll stick at it. I'm just wondering how I'm going to cope on my own at home. I mean, uh, I'm capable of looking after him if he stays in bed, but I'm not sure about helping him to get up and stuff. He's a big man, and I have my own health issues. Yes, of course. That's why I thought I'd have a word. All right. OK, so what is the answer? What did you guys feel like would be the best option? Yes. Seema. C. C. OK, obviously. C. Yes, yes. Yes, correct. C is the answer. But let's, uh, you know, um, listen to the audio once again and confirm why that is the answer. Why not A and B? Okay. All right. Let me take the audio. Here we go. Right. You wanted to speak to me. Is everything okay? Ah. So the wife is uh, uh, asking the nurse, you, you told me that you wanted to talk to me. Is everything okay with my husband? Uh, yes, everything's fine. Your husband's recovering well after the surgery. And the nurse in informs her that, you know, everything uh, with her husband is okay. He's, he's making a good recovery, so on and so forth. He should be ready for discharge in a couple of days. And he, he informs her that her, her husband will be ready to go home in, a, in two days or so. I just wanted to check with you if you have any concerns about that. And he wanted to check with the patient's wife whether she had any concerns about uh, any concerns about his discharge. That soon. So she's well, I slightly taken aback by the you know how quickly he is getting discharged. So she's like, oh, okay, um, okay, that's very soon. I suppose that's good news. I can see that you've got him up and moving already, mm -hmm. and I'm sure. So she's like, you know what, okay, uh, that's soon, but I, I think that's a good thing, you know, uh, you have already got him to move around, okay, and he will also be happy to hear that he can go home. Well, that's the best thing, or well, he does too, so no problems on that score, even so, if he does... So she is like, okay, uh, he has started moving, you've got him to move around, and he knows, you know, going home and everything is the best thing, so I'm not worried about that, okay, let's let's continue this thing. Let's get very tired. He'll stick at it. Uh, listen to that. I'm just time. wondering how I'm going. I can see that you've got him up and moving already, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that's the best thing. Well, he does too, so no problems on that score. Even if he does get very tired, he'll stick at it. So she is like, you know what? You have got him to move around, and he uh, he know that is the best thing to do, and he will be happy to hear that he will go home. And uh, uh, yes, and even if he gets tired, he will stick to it. So there is no problem with his motivation when it comes to moving around. She's saying even if he gets tired, he will stick to it. He will stick to being active, be, moving around. So that's not a problem. So B is not the answer. Let's continue listening. I'm just wondering how I'm going to cope on my own at home. I'm just wondering how will I manage everything on my own at home? I mean, uh, I'm capable of looking after him if he stays in bed. I can take care of my husband if he's, if he's in bed. I can, of course, I have no issues taking care of him. But I'm not sure about helping him to get up and stuff. But I'm not sure how I will be able to get him, uh, you know, get him up and do other, I mean, uh, help him move and stuff. He's a big man and I have my own health issues. Yes. So uh, he's pretty, he's a pretty muscular or a big man. So I, I, I have a health issue. So I'm not sure how I will be able to get him up and take care of him like that. But if he's, if he's lying down on bed, that's okay. I can take care of him. Not at all a problem. But what if, if, to move him around, to help him move, that, that's going to be an issue. So that's why AMC is the answer. She's worried uh, how, he, how, how can she support him when she herself is not healthy and he's you know much bigger than her. So how she will take care of him to get out of the bed and so on and so forth. So that's why she uh, sees the answer. Okay. And one more thing, tiredness is mentioned once, and she says even if he's tired, he will be he will stick to the uh, you know uh, whatever activity that he wants to do. So uh, tiredness is not the problem. The problem is how much, uh, uh, how difficult it is going to, for, uh, how difficult it will get for her to take care of him, to get out of the bed and, you know, help him move around because she is much smaller than him and she has her own health issues. Okay, so that's why C is the answer. Of course, that's why I thought I'd have a word. 
So the nurse is like, okay, that's why I, I thought I'll talk to you. So that's where the answer is. That's where C is the answer. Okay, this was pretty straightforward. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, Nivya, would you mind reading the next scenario for me, please? You hear a community nurse talking to a patient. Who is talking to whom, Nivya? Community nurse talking to a patient. Okay, now read the question for me. What is the patient concerned about? So we need to figure out what? Patients? Concerned. Concerned, correct. Patients concerned. Okay, all right. Can you read the options one by one for me, please? Okay, option A, the possible recurrence of a condition. So is the patient worried about the recurrence what, uh, of a condition? Is the patient worried that his condition, also, uh, a condition may come back? Is that possible possibility of that? Is that what is bothering the patient? Next one. B, discomfort in the site of a previous surgery. Or is the patient worried about the discomfort that he's having in the site of, uh, at the site of a previous surgery? So previously he had a surgery. At that site, he's, uh, he is experiencing some kind of discomfort. Is that the thing that's bothering him? Last option. Option C, changes to a growth that's already been examined. Changes to a growth. So there is some kind of growth somewhere and that growth is changing. And that growth has already been examined, but it's, it's now starting to change. Is that what is bothering him? So is the patient concerned by the possible recurrence of his condition of a condition? Or is the patient worried about the discomfort in the site of a previous surgery? Or is the patient uh, concerned about uh, a growth that has already been examined and it, it, is, uh, it is showing some changes? Okay, so all of you go through it, come on. I'm going to take the audio and I'll play it in a second. Here we go. Right. Get ready. Your audio will play at any second. So that's your injection done. Is there anything else I can help you with today, Mr. Barnes? Well, yes, nurse, there is actually. Uh, could I ask you something? About five years ago, I had what's called a lipoma removed from my chest uh, about here. Mm. It was just a fatty lump that they said was harmless. Well, at the same time, I found another little lump here next to my nipple. Anyway, I was told it wasn't malignant, but to keep an eye on it. It's just that the other day I happened to knock it and it went really red and painful. Mm. I mean, it's never bothered me before and I never had any pain with the other one they removed. Uh, could you have a look, please? Well, I'm happy to do that, but I think you ought to go and see the doctor about it, really. Okay, what do you guys think is the answer? C, ma'am. Okay, it's C, it's C, it's correct, it's C. Okay, let's see why that is, okay? And all, you will feel like all these conditions are mentioned, but all the options are mentioned, but let's see. Uh, some, for, some of it might be confusing, that's okay, let me explain. So that's your injection done. So the nurse was giving him an injection and she informs him that, you know, see, I've, I've given you the injection, we are done. Is there anything else I can help you with today, Mr. Barnes? So she asks uh, Mr. Barnes whether he needs any help with anything else. Well, yes, nurse, there is actually. Uh, could I ask you something? About five years ago, I had what's called a lipoma removed from my chest. So he is like, you know what? I actually, I need to ask you something about a few about five years ago. I underwent a surgery where they removed a, removed something called a lipoma. Uh, uh, about here, yeah. <sighs> it was just a fatty lump that they said was harmless. Well, at the same time, I found another little lump here next to my. So uh, he's like, they removed the lumps and they found out that that lump was you know harmless. And at this around that same time, around that five years ago, around that same time, he found another lump. My nipple. Anyway, I was told it wasn't malignant, but to keep an eye on it. So, it's just that the uh, during his previous surgery, where they removed one lump, they noticed another lump near his nipples, and he and they, they informed him that uh, you know it's malignant, but to you know keep observing it, you know keep an eye on it if some you know to see if it's a problem. The other day, I happened to knock it, and it went really red and painful. Mm. I mean, so, it's. Uh, the other day, by mistake, he knocked on that lump and it ended up, you know, uh, turning red and causing pain. Never bothered me before and I never had any pain with the other one they removed. Uh, could you have a look, please? Well, I'm happy. So she, he's like, you know, the other lump that they removed, I never had an issue with it. 
So the previous surgery site, no issue with that. Okay, so that's not the problem. And uh, it's not the reoccurrence of a condition. No, he's worried about uh, a growth that they told him to keep an eye on it. And now he is uh, he's somehow, you know, uh, uh, knocked on it and uh, somehow it's red and it's painful. So that, that a growth has changed in the past two days. And that's what is bothering him. And he wants the nurse to have a look at it. He to do that. But I think you ought to go and see the doctor about it, really. So the nurse is okay, let me see. But, you know, I, I think you, should, you ought to see the doctor about it. Okay, so that, that makes C your best, uh, uh, best option. Not A, not B. He's worried about another lung that was uh, that was near the uh, previous, near, not the at the site of the previous surgery, near the site of the previous surgery, which those doctors had told him to keep an eye on it. But in the past two days, it has become red and it has, you know, uh, it has become painful. So he wants her to examine it. So he's concerned about that lung. So that's why C is the answer. Okay, all right. So this is pretty straightforward as well. I hope I conveyed myself clearly here. Let's move on to the next question. Saina, would you mind reading the scenario for me? That's okay. Yes, ma'am. You hear a discharge nurse talking to a patient who is heart minor surgery. So who is talking to whom? A discharge nurse talking to a patient. Okay, the patient had a minor, has had a minor surgery. Okay, can you read the option, um, question for yes, me? The patient is requesting that a family member the patient, so a discharge nurse is talking to a patient. And the question is, the patient is requesting that a family member. So what do we need to find out? The patient is requesting, a patient request, yes, correct. Patient's request in connection to a patient, re yes, request relation, related to their family member. Family. So, patient has some uh, request uh, that uh, that is related to the, uh, the patient's family member. We need to find figure what that is about. Okay, what is the what what is the request that the patient has made uh, in relation to their family member? Okay, one second related to their family. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, as you can see, this is a this is an incomplete question. So, uh, uh, Saina, can you read each option with the question for me, please? Yes, ma'am. The pay. The patient is requesting that a family member is updated on the next steps in her treatment. So is the patient uh, requesting that they update their fa family member on the next steps? Update the family member on the next steps in, the in her treatment. Next one. The patient is requesting that a family member is given the chance to speak to a member of the surgical team. Or is the patient is requesting for a chance for the family member to speak to a member of the surgical team, somebody from the surgical team. Next one. The patient is requesting that a family member is allowed to attend a future appointment. Or is the patient requesting the presence of having their family member during the uh, future during a future appointment? So is the patient requesting to update the family member about the next steps in, in the patient's treatment? Or is the, is the patient requesting that uh, the, the family member be given a chance to talk to somebody from the surgical team? Or is the patient requesting that they allow uh, the family member to attend a future appointment? Okay, so all of you take uh, say take a second, go through the question, go through the options. Okay, I'm going to play the audio in a second. It's somewhere here. Yes, here you go. So, how are you feeling? Much better, thank you. My son should be here shortly to pick me up. Oh, great. But I'm still a bit unclear about what happens next. I'm meant to be seeing the specialist again in about three weeks' time. But the doctor I just spoke to said that the endoscopy hasn't shown up anything in particular. So, do I still need to go to that one? Well, as part of today's procedure, the team did what's called a biopsy. In other words, they've taken away a small sample of tissue for analysis. Uh, yes. Come to think of it, he did mention that. Oh dear, I'm afraid I wasn't really listening properly. I was still half asleep. Oh. Do you think you could just run through things with my son for me? I'd hate to get anything wrong. That's no problem. We'll sit down all three together before you leave, shall we? Oh, thank you. Okay, what do you guys think is the answer? Yeah. Question. Uh, a, correct. Yeah. Okay, A, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, A, correct. A is correct. Let me just take the audio, exact part of the audio, so I can explain. Yes. Okay, A is the answer. That is correct. Let's see why that is. E, all right. Okay, let's listen. 
So, how are you feeling? Much better, thank you. My son should be here shortly to pick me up. Oh, great. So uh, the nurse asks the patient, asks the, pa asks the patient how how they are feeling, and they are like, you know what, much better, and my son will be here soon to take uh, to uh, take me home. Great. But I'm still a bit unclear about what happens next. I so and she's like, okay, but I I don't I'm not sure about what's going to happen uh, to me next. And the nurse says, I'm meant to be seeing the specialist again in about three weeks' time. But the doctor I just spoke to said that the endoscopy hasn't shown up anything in particular. So do I still need to go to that one? So the thing is that she's like, you know, I'm not sure what, what, what is going to happen next because I was told that I have a review after three weeks and, you know, to see a specialist or something. But the doctor just told me that my endoscopy did not show anything wrong. So I don't understand why, why should that be? Why should I come back and see the doctor if everything is okay? Well, as as part of today's procedure, the team did what's called the biopsy. In other words, they've taken away a small sample of tissue for analysis. Uh, yes. Come to think of it, he did mention that. Oh dear, I'm afraid I wasn't really listening properly. I was still half asleep. Oh. Do so, you so the, uh, the patient is like, uh, so the nurse is like, you know what, uh, the reason, you know, they told, yes, your endoscopy was, had no problem, but the patient was asked to come again. So she's like, why, why is that? So he's like, you know what, today, as part of today's procedure, we had carried out, carried out something called a biopsy and, you know, we, uh, we, we, we will be getting the results then. Also, she's like, okay, I think I was told that, but you see, I was not, uh, I think I was not paying attention because, you know, uh, I was, uh, I, I had just woken up. I was still feeling a bit sleepy. So no way she asked that, you know, give, give, uh, allow somebody from her family to attend a future appointment. She is like, why do I need a future appointment? That was the question. Uh, and she was pretty unclear about it. Uh, and uh, she never said that she wanted to speak some, to someone from the surgical team. Let's see that. Let's see why that is. I think you could just run run through things with my son for me. I'd hate to get anything wrong. That's no... So she's like, you know what? Uh, okay, so uh, uh, there was a talk about biopsy. I was told, I think I was told that, but you see, I was not paying proper attention because I was still feeling pretty sleepy. So can you do one thing? When my son comes to pick me up, can you run all these through my son once again, if that's okay? So she's asking them to uh, 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 about the future appointment, about the uh, about the results of biopsy, the whole thing about her next next part of her treatment. Uh, she uh, they had already informed her, but she was not paying attention. So, she, so she's requesting them to talk to her, uh, go through that once again with her son uh, when he comes to pick her up. So that's why A is the answer. She's not saying that I want him to speak to a surgical team. She's like, can you run it uh, by him once again? Okay, let's listen what the nurse says. Problem. We'll sit down all three together before you leave, shall we? Oh, thank you. So when she requests a request, uh, when she makes such a request, they're like, "That's okay. Um, uh, you, me, and your son will sit together and we'll, uh, you know, have a discussion on that before you leave." Uh, how does that sound? She's like, yeah, "That's wonderful." So that's why A is the answer. Pretty straightforward. Okay. All right. Uh, so now let's move on to the next question. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. Um. My, uh, Jose, would you mind reading the next scenario for me, please, if that's okay? Yes. You hear two hospital nurses handing over a patient at the change of shift. So who both are talking to each other, Jose? Two hospital nurses. So they are having a handover. So two hospital handing nurses. Are, handover. Uh, yeah. They are, they are carrying out a handover at the end of the shift, at the change of the shift. Okay. Now, can you read the question for me? What does the incoming nurse agree to do for the patient? What does the incoming nurse agree to do for the patient? So what do we need to find out? The agree of agree, the nurse. Yes. Uh, what is agreed by? What is agreed by? The agreed, agreed by uh, the incoming nurse, the patient who is coming to take over the shift. What is she agreeing? Uh, uh, what is she agreeing to do for the patient? So, what is agreed by the incoming nurse? That's what we need to figure out. Okay. Remember, agreement, disagreement questions are very common in uh, listening part B. So, we here we need to figure out what is agreed by the incoming nurse. Okay. All right. Jos, can you read the options one by one? A, review his analgesia needs. Or is the incoming nurse agreeing to review the patient's uh, uh, analgesia needs, pain medication needs? Is that what she's agreeing upon? Next one. 
report a possible skin infection or is the incoming nurse agreeing to report on a possible skin infection last one arrange a referral to a specialist or is the nurse agreeing to arrange a referral to a specialist so we need to figure out is the incoming nurse agreeing to review the patient's uh, pain medication uh, or is the incoming nurse agreeing to report a possible skin infection or is the incoming nurse agreeing to arrange a referral to a specialist among these things what exactly is the incoming nurse agreeing to do all of you go through the options i'm going to play the audio in a second okay get ready your audio will play in 2 seconds In bed three, we have George, overnight emergency admission. Okay. George is a 66-year-old male with a suspected flare-up of gout. He's in for observation, and he's scheduled for a rheumatology consult today. It's the right knee that's inflamed, but he claims never to have had such an attack before. So pseudo gout's a possible differential diagnosis. Right. He self-medicated with ibuprofen before coming in. and a hydrocortisone injection was administered before transfer up here vital signs are all normal no other meds okay i noticed that he's got some sort of insect bite on his right ankle so that same leg it's red and swollen he said it had come on since he arrived but that it was nothing compared to the pain in the knee but perhaps it's something to follow up with the duty doctor this morning sure okay let uh What do you guys think is the answer? What is the incoming nurse agreeing to do? Option B. 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 Okay. Ah, uh, what about others? What do you guys think? Okay. C. Option C. Okay. It's B. It's B. Okay. I understand why C. You thought C is the answer, but the answer is ah uh, B. Okay. Let's see why that is. Okay. Let's listen. And remember, most of the time, the nurse, the incoming nurse, ah, uh, you know, uh, says that okay, okay. Then only for one thing, he says sure. Okay, that's where you get your answer. But let's listen. Let's just hear it. In bed three, we have George, overnight emergency admission. Okay. George is so uh, she says that you know what we have in bed three we have a patient named George he was admitted overnight uh, from uh, at the uh, as an emergency case and uh, so the other nurse is like okay. He's a sixty-six year old male with a suspected flare-up of gout. He's in for observation, and he's scheduled for a rheumatology consult today. So she's like, uh, he is admitted. He's sixty-six years old, and they, we suspect that he has a flare-up of gout, and he's um, scheduled for a rheumatology uh, 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 consultation. That is already scheduled. Okay, it's already scheduled. It's the right knee that's inflamed, but he claims never to have had such an attack before. So according to the patient, uh, his right knee is—I mean, uh, his right knee is the one that is affected. But according to the patient, this has never happened before. Okay, so uh, nowhere, or uh, she says that you know uh, the incoming nurse needs to arrange a referral. So, uh, the rheumatology appointment is already fixed. The incoming nurse uh, uh, does not need to do anything about it. Okay, let's continue listening. So pseudo gout's a possible differential diagnosis. Right. So the nurse is like, you know what? The, this patient told that he has never had any problem like this. Ah, uh, so we think that it can be a, a case of pseudo gout. So the other nurse is like, okay. He self medicated with ibuprofen before coming in, and a hydrocortisone injection was administered before transfer up here. Vital signs are all normal. No other meds. Okay. So she's like, he tried, or uh, he uh, he took uh, some medications uh, before he came here. Then before he was admitted, he was administered hydrocortisone injection. And right now, you know, uh, 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 the other ways, everything is okay. Kind of, uh, that's the situation. I noticed that he's got got some sort of insect bite on his right ankle. So so that's that, so everything. See, it's okay. No other meds. Okay. I noticed that he's got some sort of insect bite on his right ankle. So, so uh, uh, he took his own medication. We administer hydrocortisone, and he's not on any other medications. And she says, "Okay." I mean, the other nurse says, "Okay." And she's like, "You know what? I noticed something uh, that that he has got some sort of insect bite uh, on his, you know, uh, right. Uh, I think right uh, toe or something." That same leg. It's red and swollen. He said it had come on since he arrived, but. That it was nothing compared to the pain in the knee. 
so the it is it is you know pretty bad since i've noticed since then it has become really bad but the patient is like you know this happened after i came here and actually compared to the pain on his knees the pain from this uh, insect bite is nothing so the patient is not much worried about the insect. He's like, you know, I think it happened while I was here. And for him, it's not a big deal, but he's more uh, concerned about the pain on his right knee. But perhaps it's something to follow up with the duty doctor this morning. So she's, that is the sentence. So that insect bite, she says that perhaps it's something that we need to follow up with the uh, duty doctor this morning. Listen to that. Nothing compared to the pain in the knee, but perhaps it's something to follow up with the duty doctor this morning. Sure. So that's where he says, sure. Perhaps it's something that we need to follow up on with the duty doctor. He's not asking to, I mean, he's not being asked to arrange a referral. He's not asked to uh, review his analgesia needs. Nothing like that. Medication, everything is fine. Rather, they have noticed a possible, uh, um, um, a, a, an insect bite on the same leg, which is not bothering the patient much compared to the pain in his knee. However, they would like uh, the incoming nurse to do a follow-up with the duty doctor this morning. So that's why um, uh, B is the answer. Okay, that's why B is the answer. Let's, one second. Yeah, that's it. And he says, sure. So he's agreeing to do something. That is follow-up with the duty doctor about the uh, insect part. That's on, his, on, on the same uh, leg. Okay, so that's why. Uh, B is the answer. Smita, Asma, Nivya, Manju, Manu, others, did I make myself clear so far? Are you clear with this one? Why B is the answer? Not A, not C. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay, yes. all right. Now, 30th question. Um, Surya, would you mind reading the 30th scenario for me, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you hear the beginning of a training section for healthcare staff in a primary care setting on the uh, subject of patient consultation. So here, uh, what are we going to listen to here? Uh, beginning of a beginning of a training training session session, session for healthcare staff in okay. primary care setting, and the subject is patient consultation. Patient consultation. So it's a training session for the healthcare staff, and the topic is uh, patient consultations. Okay, all right. Can you read the question for me, please? Yeah. Uh, what is the focus of the session going to be? So we need to figure out the. Focus of the, uh, focus focus of of the, the session. session. So they are talking about, they are having a training session on the subject of patient consultations. We need to figure out the focus of the session. What is the focus of the session going to be? Okay, focus of the session. What, what is it going to be? That's what we need to figure out. So can you read the options one by one for me, please? Yeah, option A, alternative ways of setting up consultations. So is that the focus of the uh, session? Alternative ways, other ways of setting up consultations, other ways of fixing consultations. Is that the uh, focus? Next one. How to make the most of telephone consultation. Or is, is it about how to make the most, how to get the most out of uh, telephone con con consultations? Okay, how to utilize telephone consultations to the best or to the maximum. Is that the focus? Next one. Ways of deciding when face-to-face -face consultations are necessary. Or is it is the focus of the session, is it about uh, uh, how we face can decide uh, when face-to-face -face consultation, consultations are needed? So is the focus of session going to be different ways uh, to set up consultations? Or is it about how to make the most, how to uh, um, get the most out of telephone consultations? Or uh, what, are, uh, what are the different ways uh, through which we can decide uh, the need for face-to-face -face consultations? All of you go through it. Come on, go through the question. Go through the options. Okay, let me take the video. Get, I mean, audio, get ready. Yes, your audio will start in a second. Please get ready. Here we go. For those of us working in primary care, telephone consultations certainly bring benefits. Uh, the caseload's easier to manage because we can make more effective use of triage meaning some patients get directed to other services without the need for a time-consuming face-to-face visit. But something's lost too, isn't it? Mm, it is. One of the most obvious drawbacks is that you don't get those telltale non-verbal cues. These help us to see where the patient's coming from and what the patient's priorities are in all sorts of subtle ways that aren't always evident from the plain words heard down the line. That's right. 
Well, today we'll be looking at ways to get around some of the issues and ensure these consultations are effective, like ways of checking that an explanation we're giving is making sense to the patient and whether the options we're sharing are something the patient feels comfortable with. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think is the answer? Is it A, is it B, is it C? Which one? A. Okay, uh, it's not A, actually it's B. Correct, B is B. correct. Let's see why that is, okay? Uh, I understand why you thought about alternative ways, but uh, let's listen and understand. Let's not imagine. Let me take the audio. Uh, yes. For those of us working in primary care, telephone consultations certainly bring benefits. So uh, uh, the speaker is like, you know what, uh, those who work in primary care for us, telephone consultations are really good. It, it's really helpful. Uh, the caseload's easier to manage because we can make more effective use of triage. So he's like, you know, um, uh, telephone consultations are good for us. We are able to manage the caseload because, you know, uh, um, we can, uh, one second, uh, yeah easier to manage because we can make more effective use of triage. We can handle caseloads better because we can actually effectively use triage. Okay, so he's like saying how good uh, uh, telephone consultations are as a you know primary care uh, health professional. Meaning some patients get directed to other services without the need for a time-consuming face-to-face visit. So uh, he's like, you know, we are able to handle triage much better when we have telephone uh, consultations because without uh, bring, uh, having a face-to-face -face conversation and, you know, leading them physically to, uh, you know, uh, to departments, we can actually do that through the phone. Where they have to be sent, we can uh, lead the patients to the uh, uh, appropriate place that they need to be without, you know, physically uh, them being here, we being, uh, you know, leading them there. We can actually do the whole thing through uh, the telephone. And that's why it's, it's a very good thing for us. Uh, our caseload is manageable because of that. But something's lost too, isn't it? So he's like, yes, it's a good thing. But don't you think some something is getting lost uh, when you do a telephone con consultation? Uh, so she's like, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I do think that as well. It is. One of the most obvious drawbacks is that you don't get those telltale non-verbal cues. These help us to see where the patient's coming from and what the patient's priorities are in all sorts of subtle ways. That So she's like, yeah, I think that something is getting lost. One of the things that I feel like, you know, we are losing when we have a telephone consultation is picking up on the facial cues and, you know, and those subtle cues that when you have a face-to-face -face conversation, you can understand okay, where the patient is coming from, what exactly is based on the their facial expressions and, you know, all those subtle cues that's, uh, that we can, that you cannot get in a telephone consultation. So that is something that I feel like we are missing on when you have a telephone conversation. Aren't always evident from the plain words heard down the line. That's right. So these things, these facial cues and these non-verbal cues are not uh, evident when you're talking to the patient on the line. So that's one thing she feels like we are losing when we are having a telephone consultation, even though, as he told, it's much more uh, manageable. We can easily take care of the triage and everything. But this is something that we're losing, the picking up on the facial and non-verbal cues that helps us to understand where the patient is coming from, what is what, what exactly you know uh, 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 the patient is dealing with. So understanding that through a line, it's not, it's not possible. So that is a drawback that she points out. Of, a, of telephone consultation. They are not talking about uh, uh, whether to decide, when to decide, uh, or ways to decide face to face, the need for face to face consultation. They are saying in a telephone consultation, it's difficult to pick up on the non verbal cues. Well, today we'll be looking at ways to get around some of the issues and ensure these consultations. So, so today, Today, we will be having a look at some some uh, different uh, look at ways through which we can get around some of these issues, some of the issues related to telephone consultations. That's heard down the line. That's right. Well, today, we'll be looking at ways to get around some of the issues and ensure these consultations are effective. So they're talking about problems with telephone consultation. And he's like, you know, today we will be looking at uh, looking at different ways we can deal with those issues and actually make these, cons these telephone consultations more effective. Like ways of checking that an explanation we're giving is making sense to the patient. So uh, we will talk about different ways to check a patient's understanding when we are having a telephone consultation and whether the options we're sharing are something the patient feels comfortable with. And checking the patient's comfort, uh, uh, level of comfort with some things that, uh, things that we are offering to them. 
So basically, they are not talking about different ways to set it, setting up a consultation. They did not talk about different ways of deciding whether or when face-to-face -face consultations are needed. Rather, they are talking about the uh, drawback of telephone consultation how, uh, uh, and how today's session is focusing on uh, uh, working around it and uh, making them effective. Uh, example is checking for understanding, checking for whether the patient is comfortable with certain options that you're given. So basically, it's about making telephone consultations better by addressing their drawback. So that's why B is the answer. Smita, Surya, Jose, Asma, uh, Sefi, Saina, Manchu, Nithya, others, did I make myself clear here? Are you clear why B is the best option? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. So don't go with one word. Do they mention face-to-face -face consultation? Yes. To say that uh, what we get from face-to-face -face consultation, we don't get it from telephone consultation to show the uh, drawback of a telephone consultation. Okay, so please don't uh, uh, don't match with the you know uh, the uh, word to, word to it. Understand the meaning of what you're listening to. That is where you need to focus. Okay, understand and connect and compare it with the best option. Okay, all right. So uh, that's what that is. So please go through this material once again. This is the latest material, and uh, and if you have any questions, get back to me. Okay, do this once again, each and every question by yourself, and see whether you are able to understand it. And if you have any questions, get back to me on that. One more thing: evening we will be having a uh, uh, listening part C. We will be focusing on a presentation because last week we discussed interview. Okay, so uh, I hope to see you guys there. Okay, so uh, that's it for now. If you have any questions after going through the audio once again, make sure to get back to me. Okay, that's it. Uh, and I'll be sending this material and extra material everything in the evening. Okay, thank you.